Hello YouTube, it is I, the San Julia. I am here to talk to you today about why and in what cases would you want to use two DHCP servers on a network. Well, even with a complex network, you still manage all your network clients only using only one a DHCP server, depending on your network typography. I may have said that wrong, I apologize. Correct me in the comments, go for it. Um, you may need to set up a few THCP slash boot relay agents in or enable routers to follow DHCP packets and make it work. Now using only one DHCP server for your entire network will centralize host configuration management for all your clients. However, there are cases where you may want you may want to consider using multiple DHCP servers for your network to avoid single point a single point failure. So that way you know okay this one goes down, we can use this one. I mean, that way, you know, you don't have that problem. You can configure two DHCP servers to serve the same subnet. If one fails, the other can continue to serve as a subnet. Each of the DHCP servers may be accessible either by direct attachment to the subnet or by using a DHCP boot P relay agent. Before, because two DHCP servers cannot serve as the same addresses, address pools must be signed by the subnet mask. Must be, not subnet mask, just subnet. Must be unique across the DHCP servers. Sorry, I've got... I need some water. Um, therefore, you using two or more DHCP servers serves a particular subnet the complete list of addresses of that subnet have to be divided. So you say you have one server so that all of your subnet are on that one. Um, you have two DHCP servers. You can put, say, 50 on one and 50 on the other. Um, three, you know, you can do 33, 33, 33, and so on. You can figure, um, where am I at? List of addresses must be divided among servers. Yes, I just went over that. For example, you can configure one server with the address pools consisting of 70% available addresses for the subnet, while other server addresses consisting of the remaining 30% of the main available addresses. That way you have your main set over here and your side set over here. Um, using multiple DHCP servers decreases the probability of having DHCP related network access failures, but it is not guarantee against it. I mean, there's no guarantee that it won't happen. I mean, you can't make everything 100% foul-proof. Um, if a DHCP server for a particular subnet fails, the other DHCP server will, may no, oh, not will, but it may not be able to service all the requests from the new clients, which may, for example, use all the server's limited polls for available addresses. Um, if you were considering multiple DHCP servers, remember that multiple DHCP servers in your network, each server must can be configured with their own unique IP address range. That's it for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed this little uh, three, three, four minute clip on why you may want to use two or more, or not two or more, more than one DHCP server. Have a good day.